Shalom. Um, like I said, I appreciate the seal portion, the uh, seal Book of Mormon, the Book of Mormon, or the Book of Joseph in the hands of Ephraim. Of course, the uh, the first day, the Holy Bible. And we know that a lot of information has been taken out of the Holy Bible. Even all of our holy books have been taken out, but the Most High has found fit to replace and, and replenish our information through our books to put that information back in these books. And of course, there there is bone in them. I was in prayer today, and I asked the Most High to give me a mind to see him for who he is and see his word for what it is and see his people and basically to see everything for what it really is. I talked to uh, Elder Ayil, well I didn't talk to him, you know, I was messaging him on Facebook, right? Because I, I respect, you know, the position he has taken and and he he, he says that he is the leader of um, the house of Joseph, stick you know Ephraim. Here are the, in the the uh, ten tribes here. So I, I respect him for that. So you know, I if the Most High be with him. So I, like I said, I prefer my brother before myself. So he says that through faith he's doing a good work. So. I, I, I'm going to say I talked to him, but I did not. It was basically a text or a message. And it, it was some things that were said in, in the uh, sealed portion that I, that I said I was not going to talk about. You know, it was into a later time when, when more information comes available. So I'm going to honor that. But in saying this, I had a thought. And this message that's coming forth today is going to be a challenge to the flesh kind of goes on like the second part of the video I put out yesterday. It's going to be a challenge to the flesh. I should have named it uh, Your Ways Are Not My Ways and Your Thoughts Are Not My Thoughts. That's what I should have named it. But I stayed true to what the text in the sealed portion said. Then I thought this kind of goes along the lines. I'm not going to get all the way into it according to the seal portion, but it kind of goes along the line because it does mention that in here. Let me ask you a question. I'm not talking about marriage where you go get a, a, a marriage license or nothing like that through the state. I'm not talking about that. You know, because the Most High is a jealous Elohim. And, you know, he's he not going to share his glory with another, so he's not going to have another God over you. But let me ask you, is holy matrimony evil? I'm just asking a question. Is the union between a man and a woman evil before the Most High? Did not he say he made man in his image? Didn't he say that? He said, let us make man in our image. See, a lot of the images and imaginations that we have come out of religion. Because I know, until now, I used to imagine the Most High is just being a being sitting up there and out of nowhere, just sitting there up there by itself until he, you know, created Jesus and Jesus created everything else. But I just see, used to see the Most High just up there by itself in outer nothingness, just by himself, just nothing. He just sitting there. Thing like that would be boring. And then I started to look, I said, well, let me look at man. His people. See, his people are fruitful and they multiply. Let us create man in our image. I'm just saying consider. This ain't the way it gotta be, but I'm just saying consider. If you could consider what he said and in the way he does things. Because we were made in his eternal image of immortality. According to uh, the Apocrypha, the Book of Wisdom, 
four, no, chapter two. So I'm just thinking, would it be wrong for the most high to have a wife? And we all as children. I'm just saying, that, that sounds far-fetched, but not really. Let thy, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And then we know, according to the second stick, or the seal portion and different ones, that there are many worlds. That those who shall make it, depending on what level you make it on, the highest order is being the celestial, where the Father's at. And they say he's coming down here. And this is going to be part of the celestial, this world. So that means others may have to go to other worlds. Who don't make this one? I'm saying, would, would that be far fetched? I'm talking about this if you just really think about it. And I, I'm not going to touch on it. I'm just going to throw this out there because, you know, maybe uh, El Dai or somebody else will build on it. But I'm just saying, because right, I want to keep my word. But I'm just going to throw this out there. My, my, my uh, spark. Might spark some in them to bring it out. I don't know. We, I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to kind of. Would it be a sin if Jesus did have a wife? Would that would that be a sin? Would that take away from who he is? Because it's still righteous. There's nothing wrong with it. Would that take away from him if he had one? Just saying. Now. We know that the Catholic Church has taken taken out and put in images that they want, right? Changed his color, change you know, you know us Hebrews have children, right? I'm not saying that's what he had no children, I'm just saying. But you know I, I, these Hebrews are fruitful and multiply. So could it also be that those same Catholic Church could have taken out the parts that Jesus could have had a wife? Because isn't it their policy for the, you know, I'm not sure now, but at one time I know for, I, I believe, because I'm not a Catholic, that their, their uh, people could not, couldn't have wives. So could it because of that's their that because of that's their operations that they might have changed the scriptures to make it seem like that was Jesus' operation as well? I'm just asking. I mean, I'm asking these things because the sealed portion and books like that is bringing out a different picture to consider. So I'm gonna get started. And like I said, this. Uh, this this will be challenging for the flesh. But we're gonna get started and see where it leads us. I got some precepts to go along with it. Chapter 19, the heading. Adam explains in plainness the law of the gospel and the commandments of Jesus Christ. Love your neighbor as yourself. He explains the sacredness and importance of fidelity in marriage. Verse 1. And Adam continued his teaching, saying, Our eternal mothers, see, the eternal mothers are the spiritual mothers. See, we never was talking about that in Christianity. I, you know, at least, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be fair about it. At least the image that I got from the teachings of the preaching of Christianity was the father was just up there in utter nothingness forever by himself. Chilling. 
was looking around and space, wherever he was at. Just like, and they always has just been there. I'm like, man, I really can't comprehend that because man, just sitting there. Kind of I could, because you know, that's how you, when you gang stalk and stuff, you could, you kind of sitting there by yourself, but by the grace you make it through. And he could do it, that's, that's what he wanted to do, but that was just how the image I got from him. And then, until he, then he created another being out of himself and made him into a, another being called him Jesus. Or as these scriptures say, Jehovah, but I can call him Yahuwah or Yahweh. And then I used to think that the father name, well, the father is Yah. You know, we call him other things too. But. but when we talk about Jesus, we're talking about Yahuwah, Yahweh, you know, what that name you'll use, Yahweh, whatever, whatever name you use. And then, the reason I don't say Ahaya is because, you know, and, and a lot of brothers do, you know, they, they have scripture for it, but also in the plain, in the, uh, the Book of Mormon, it says Satan is known as Ahaya. It's spelled different than Ahaya the way our brothers use it, but I just don't use it because that, that sound is kind of too, too close to me. You know, Satan tricky, so I don't use that. That's just me. I'm not saying they're wrong. Then, talking about the eternal mothers. We never talked about nothing like that in Christianity. But it would make sense that the Father do have all these things going in his kingdom. Now, I don't want to lie on the Father, but I'm, you know, I'm just going by trying to look as what has been presented with an open mind to believe in knowing that the scriptures have been uh, turned and twisted to fit a certain process, a, a certain di uh, diagram or something like that. So knowing that this certain church that they call the whore, who's Priests and different ones that didn't marry. So that's why I, th I thought I said, well, it could be, could be something to that, man, because they structured it in a certain way to make Jesus look like he was part of that kind of priesthood. And it, and it made it made it seem like if he did have a wife or something that that would be a sin. Now I don't know if he did or not. I'm just saying, just based on what I've read. We know holy matrimony is not a sin before the Father. So let's continue. And Adam continued his teaching saying, Our eternal mothers taught us that we must obey the laws of the kingdom of God in order to ensure that we would be guaranteed the happiness that each of us desired for ourselves. Verse 2. And now I would that you should know that these laws were also given unto your mother Eve and me upon our expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Behold, these laws are eternal and are the same in the world in which our eternal parents reside, as well as in all the kingdoms that exist. And these laws ensure order in the universe, and that the end of these laws, which is happiness, may be realized by all those subjected to these laws. Verse 3. And if you abide by these laws, throughout the days of your probation upon this earth then you shall you shall also have peace and order among you here 
and for this purpose were they given unto us after we left the garden of Eden. Verse 4. And these laws are based upon one great law, which, which encompasseth, encompasseth all of the commandments of God has given us. Yea, it encompasses all of the commandments that shall ever be given unto you and your children forever. Also another thought that we've also, this has been proven. The Father is not just some mist or some spook or some breath of wind or smoke. He literally has a soul. He has body, you know, everything that we have. We're, we look exactly like him. Just like the sun. Uh, and he has a tangible body, a flesh and bone. Same body that Christ got up in. Verse 4. And these laws are based upon one great law which encompasseth all of the commandments that God has given us. Yea, it, it, it encompasseth all of the commandments that shall ever be given unto you and your children forever. Verse 5. And this is the law on which all other commandments are based that was given unto us by Yahuwah, even that you should do unto others what you would have them do unto you. Matthews, the precepts, Matthews 7 and 12, verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would, that men shall do unto you, do ye not do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Luke 6, 31. And as you would that men should do unto you, do you also to them likewise. Verse 6. Now from this law, Yahuwah has given us specific instructions or commandments that must follow to accomplish that we must follow to accomplish the purpose of this law. Verse 7. Also consider that these laws that we don't understand, and, and you know, because people don't like to be told what to do and things like that, especially by the Father. So he knows things we don't know. And he's, he always thinks good thoughts, consider he always thinks good thoughts towards us. And because we don't know these things, as he says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because if you keep these commandments, you set yourself up for eternal happiness in, in, a, in a mortal situation that you will never die. And you just have continually happiness and you'll receive the same body I got. Everybody not going to receive those. That's also going to lead us to the place where when Christ was talking to uh those under the uh, the Aaron priesthood. Consider this. We're going to get there. But he, he, this one woman, this Israelite woman had uh, seven, hu seven husbands. Because in Israel, once a man dies, the, the brother is supposed to come in. These seven brothers had had her. Because it was, they, the each brother was his responsibility to take over the, the former brother's responsibility with that wife. So then, when all seven brothers died, she outlived them all. So then, them testing, thinking they was testing him, and this is the, this is the master, right? Thinking they're testing him. So whose wife will she be in the resurrection? He said, you, need, you, don't need to, you need to know the scriptures. You don't know the you don't know the scriptures you're talking about. He said, "For in the resurrection there should be no marriage nor given into marriage, but they should be like the angels, because he knew who he was talking to. 
them people wasn't going to get that immortal celestial body. So, because there's another place in the scripture he said there's more, I, I think it was in uh, what they call the New Testament. I can look it up, or you can look it up on the internet. He said, there, he said there's more I, 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 I desire to tell you, but now you couldn't handle it. I think that was Paul who was talking. So, there was no need for Jesus to tell them nothing about no celestial kingdom and the possibility of having wives and all those things. He just gave them the, the, the basics. Verse 6. Now from this law, Yahuwah has given us specific instructions and commandments that we must follow to accomplish the purpose of this law. Verse 7. For he has commanded us that we should not be angry one with another, and that we should have a respect for the opinions of each other, and rejoice in the freedom that we each have to express our own opinion without the fear of repression or anger from, from another. Verse 8. For this anger can cause us to strike out at our neighbors and harm them for that in which our, let me read that again, verse 8. For this anger can cause us to strike out at our neighbors and harm them for that in which we feel they have wronged us. And why is it that we feel they have wronged us? Is it not that they do not do that which do let me read it again. The way it's written, you got to read it right. Is it, is it that we feel that they have wronged us? Is it not that they do that which does not agree with us? And why should we believe that our opinion of that which they think or do is that which is right? Yea, it might be right for us, but it might not be right for our neighbor. Verse 9. And this anger can escalate and cause you to strike out against your neighbor. Now I say unto you that this is most abominable, abominable before God. Even that you should touch your neighbor without first receiving the permission to do so. For upon doing so, you have taken away the free agency of your neighbor. For they have the right not to be touched by you if it is so be their desire. Verse 10. And the eternal law that is violated by anger is the law of free agency, which guaranteed to each of us the right to act according to the desire of our hearts. And according to this law, you have the right to become angry with your neighbor if that be your desire. Even though your desire would be contrary to the commandment of God, but you do not have the right to strike out in anger and harm another. For your neighbor did not use his free agency to desire that you strike him. Verse 11. Therefore, verse 11. Now, thought came to me when, when, when they had falsely arrested the Messiah and one of the high priest men struck out and slapped him. And he said, why do you slap me? Verse 11, therefore, you have been commanded to respect one another and give unto each other this worthy respect that each of us deserve, deserve it. And you should not be angry because you do not understand that which your neighbor doeth with his free agency. For he will be held accountable for that which he does. He do it. And you will not be held accountable. Therefore, why do, why should you be angry? Verse 12. And Yahuwah has commanded us to have kind thoughts towards each other. And not to be involved in rumors or gossip in any manner concerning another. For if we, with our own eyes, do not see... For if we, 
with our own eyes do not see that which our neighbor has done, then we, then why think ye that you can trust the words of another to tell you the truth regarding that which they claim they have seen? For that person who is making an account unto you of this action of another would not do so unless he was angry with another. For what other purpose would there be a reason for a rumor or gossip, except to make an account of those actions which we do not agree? Verse 13. And Yahuwah has commanded us to refrain from listening to those who would make a bad account of the actions of another. And he, see, this is one of the things that the Most High hates. Abomination. And Yahuwah has commanded us to refrain from listening to those who would make a bad account of the actions of another. And he would that we should know that even if the account of these actions is true, we should respect that this person has, has his free agency to act. And he has commanded us not to become angry when another person uses his free agency to act according to his will. Precept, Exodus 20, 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Verse 14. For our father allowed Lucifer and those that followed after him to act according to the laws of free agency. He did not become angry with them, but he loved them and blessed them. Nevertheless, he was bound by the eternal laws of heaven in the limit of that which he could do to save them. They haven't acted according to the law using their own free agency. Verse 15. And nothing good can come from an angry heart. For he who is angry places his spirit in a state of rebellion with his body. And for this reason, the body reacted to the anger of the spirit, thus causing sickness and poor health. Precept, verse 15. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 7 and 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger rested in the bosom of fools. Verse 16. And Yahuwah has given this commandment unto us that there might not arise contentions and disputation, dis, disputations among us. For where there are contentions and disputations, war soon followeth. And many souls are sent home to God who gave them life unprepared for the state in which they shall be received. Verse 18, 17. And it has been with great sadness that I have watched death by the hand of another enter in among you because of the anger of which I have spoken. For even my beloved son Cain did, commit, did submit to the anger of his heart, murdered his brother Abel, and that day I lost two sons, for it became necessary that I banish my beloved son Cain and his wives and his sons and daughters from among us, that we might guard ourselves against these terrible things. Verse 18. And I would that you should know that I counseled with Cain and commanded him that he should repent of the thing which he had done. But his heart was hardened against my words, and he would not give heed to the tenderness of my love for him. And he kept the anger that he felt for his brother inside of him, and would not release it from his soul. Precept, Genesis 4, 6, and 7. And Yahuwah said to Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy continence fallen? Verse 7. If thou doest well, thou shalt not. If thou doest well, shalt not thou be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be. Let's see what I wrote. And unto thee shall be his. 
do what I guess, and thou shalt rule over him. And unto he unto and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. All right, verse nineteen. And Yahuwah has commanded us that if we have something amiss between each of us, each of each other, that we should reconcile our differences between ourselves and love, not allowing anger to control us and cause us to hate. Twenty. And it is also with great sorrow that I was forced to construct prisons among us, wherein we could hold those who would not give heed unto the commandments of Yahuwah and who could not control their anger. And in these prisons have I caused that they should be taught and counseled and have shown unto them a great love than that which they experienced without the walls of the prisons, that they might know in what way they should act when they are released from these prisons. Verse 20, uh, let's see where we're we at. Verse 21. For if these are imprisoned because of their anger, and are therefore shown greater examples of anger and hate within prison, then when they are released, they should be much worse off than when they first entered into prison. Thus have I commanded our prisons to be places of instruction and love and tender feelings, that they are that they who are therein might have an example set for them. Verse 22, And Yahuwah has commanded us that we should not return evil for evil, but that we should return good unto all. For this is what we would have others do unto us. For when, you, for when your neighbor doeth something evil unto you, he does not believe at the moment that he is doing this thing unto you that is, his actions are wrong. For he believeth that his actions were wrong at the time of that he doeth evil unto you, or if he believed it that his actions were evil, then he would not have done this thing unto you. Verse 23. And Satan has been given power to tempt us and cause us to take that which is good as something that was that is evil. And likewise he causes us to take that which is evil as something that is good. And in the moment that our neighbor is enticed to do evil unto us, Satan can attempt him and cause him to justify this evil thing as a thing that is good at the moment. Nevertheless, Satan does not have the power to tempt us beyond the ability to resist him, thus making us fully responsible for our own actions. Precept, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There is no temptation taking you, but as such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted be above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. Verse 24. Because of the power of Satan, and the weakness of our neighbor in resisting his enticements, many times our neighbor will do evil unto us believing that it is good. And if it is so, be that we do evil back to him, even though at the moment we might justify it as that which is good because of the things that he has done unto us, us, we have disobeyed the commandments of your Lord. All right, let's see. Verse 25. And Yahuwah gave us this commandment, saying, Behold, I say unto you, that you shall not resist evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn him, turn to him the other also. Precept Luke 6, 29. And unto him that smited thee on the one cheek, Offer also the other. And him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Matthew 5 and 40. If someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. Verse 
Verse 26. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. 27. For there have been many of you who have come before the judges that I have caused to be set up among you to administer the laws that we have obtained among us to maintain peace and order. And you bring unto them grievances against your neighbor. Now, when you do this, you have already broken the commandments of God. And that you have become angry with your neighbor and, ha and have the desire to take the matter of your anger against him before a judge. And in this you do sin. But this is not the end of your sin. For you cause him whom you have sued to also sin. Because in his anger he will defend himself before the judge. 28. And no good can come of the grievance between you. But Yahuwah has commanded any of you who are taken before a judge by your neighbor who has a grievance against you to give your neighbor all things to give unto your neighbor all things that he has asked of you in his grievance against you. In other words, he has commanded you not to defend yourself, but to submit to the demands of the grievance. Precept. Matthew five and twenty five. Agree with thy adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary delivereth thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and, and be cast into prison. Verse 29. And if you submit to the demands of the grievance against you, then you are not angry because of it. And if, and if you give what is asked of you by your neighbor, then you have stopped the cause of the anger that your neighbor has against you. Verse 30. And if you are struck by your neighbor and you return the blow unto him, then you are angry when you deliver this blow unto him. And in his anger, he will return again and strike you. And then the anger of both of you will rise and cause that you both shall sin before God, even until you have committed the most grievous sin before him, even the sin of murder. Verse 30, 31. Therefore, Yahuwah has commanded you to turn the other cheek, that your neighbor may strike you, may strike you again in his anger. But you shall not be angry and strike back. And when you have offered both your cheeks unto him that he might strike you, strike them, then the end of this anger might be satisfied and, and both of your lives may be saved. Verse 32. And Yahuwah has commanded the saying, Behold, I say unto you, your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good unto them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your Father who is in heaven. Precept, Matthew 5, 25. Agree with your adversary quickly while thou art in his way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judges, and the judges, okay. No, I grabbed the wrong precept. We will move on, though. Verse 33. Now this commandment, which he has given unto us, cannot be given with any more plainness than that which Yahuwah has spoken. Verse 34. Behold, we are commanded to love each other in spite of what might be done unto us. For, we, for are we not all brothers and sisters who belong to the same Father who has created us? And does not the Father love each of us the same? Yea. 
I know. Let me see, let me see where we at. Yea, I know that the Father loveth each of us the same, for he is no respecter of persons, and loveth the sinner like unto the prophet. And he loveth Satan as he loveth each of us. For behold, Satan was our brother in the beginning. Precepts, Matthew 5 and 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So even it talks about how the, the all that Satan has done, the Father gave him opportunity to come back and make everything right. But Satan, Satan is like in that movie, Satan just can't get right or don't want to get right. So Father had no choice but to sentence him to the lake. That's why he also said he would that none should perish. But just like Satan, those who take to his side are going to find it because he don't wish them to perish either. But because they, just like they, daddy Satan, they can't get right. And they don't want to get right. So they got to go to the lake too. Wasn't created for them. Verse 35, and we have been commanded to do good in all situations and love our enemies as well as our friends. And it is easy to love our friends, for even the most evil among us love their friends and hate their enemies. 36, but a sure judge of the righteousness of a man or woman is not in how they love their friends, but how they love and treat their enemies. And if there are any among you who hate another then what reward have you when you when you are friend when you love your friends for you shall be loved also by your friends and this is your reward but when you love your enemies then they will not return unto you this love but your reward will be given unto you by God 37 and now my beloved children that's why I said also that's why I said put on this mind what was also in Christ Jesus. See, because and just like Paul said, I pressed to the mark, charge the mark. See, the, the enemies and those who are on the, the base levels who want to do harm and that's because that's how they think about it. They they have they serpent dwellers. They dust dwellers. So that's what they think about, the, the base things. But those who have this mind of Christ. We have a higher desire, a higher. We know that there is a higher reward waiting. There, you know, there's a. We have opportunity to not only live forever, but we have opportunity to to live in happiness and joy forever in a immortal body of flesh and bone, just like our heavenly Father and Big Brother Jesus got. And according to this word, we're gonna be the only ones that's gonna be able to have a wife. And have those things that are pleasurable. Because on the other levels, that's, you know, that's not going to be going on in the other worlds. Think about from a sister's point of view, or a husband. You know, you might get a husband. That's just consideration. If you don't believe it, no problem. This ain't my word. I'm just reading what's here. And if it's bone, it's bone. If it's not, I'm just gonna read what's here. It's, it's all for consideration. Verse 36, 
But a sure judge of righteousness of a man or a woman is not in how they love their friends, but in how they love and treat their enemies. And if there are any among you who hate another, then what reward have you when you have loved your friends? For you shall be loved also by your friends, and this is your reward. But when your enemies then they will not return unto you this love, but your reward will be given unto you by God. Verse 37. And now, my beloved children, I would that you should understand that this flesh, that's why another scripture says, those who are born of the flesh is flesh, and those who are born by the spirit is spirit. You can't, a, a spiritual man cannot really expect a fleshly man to understand the higher things of the Most High. And a spiritual man must always stay prayed up and be led by the Spirit so he won't come down to the level of a serpent dweller or dust, dust crawler. That's the flesh. That's not the insult to nobody, but that's just what the flesh does. The serpent crawls around on his belly. Always into the base things. Verse 37 again. And now, my beloved children, I would that you should understand that this flesh meaning nothing before God. But that which is in the flesh is of God. And if you lose this flesh by obeying the commandments of God, then by losing this flesh you shall be received by God. But if you keep this flesh because you have disobeyed the commandments of God, then you will not be received by God, but will receive the reward of the flesh which rewards are contrary to the happiness of God. Precept, Matthew 16, 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. Verse 38, and now that when my son Cain confronted his brother Abel in the field, his brother did not become angry with him, nor did he fight back to save his life. But in his final words, he blessed his brother Cain and forgave him for that which he was about to do unto him. And my son Abel was received by God and given a reward, just reward. Who else did that? Um... Stephen, who's who the who uh, Saul at the time before he became Paul the apostle, was there witnessing and beckering on to, for the stoning of Stephen, who was full of the Holy Ghost. So when they stoned him and before he fell on to sleep, he looked up into the heavens and he saw the Father in his flesh and bone body, and in his right side he saw the Messiah Yahuwah, Jesus Christ in his flesh and bone body looking down from heaven and he, he was able to see them before he transitioned into his flesh and bone body I don't say that but that's what happened because he, he, he achieved he achieved everlasting life because you, you really couldn't even see the Father and Son unless you went through the, uh, what is it, the Urim and the Thurim? Being transformed. Verse 38. And now...
And now, verse 38, and now that when my son Cain confronted his brother Abel in the field, his brother, and of course Christ said the same thing, just like Stephen said, forgive them for they know not what they do. This is a common theme in all the people. But in his final words, he blessed his brother Cain and forgave him for that which he was about to do unto him. And my son Abel was received by God and given a just reward. That you know he was received he was received by God immediately. That's why he saw the father and the son before he went fell asleep. Verse 39, and Cain has received a just recompense for that which he has done. And his reward was that of the flesh, which flesh became his curse and caused him to lose the happiness that he could have enjoyed among us if he would have obeyed the commandments of God. Verse 40, and if your neighbor rises up against you to take your life, Trust in the commandments of God, and bless your neighbor, and do not fight against him. And if you will do this, you shall be received by God. And if you defend yourself and take up arms against your neighbor, then you shall gain the reward of the flesh. And this reward shall be the continual hatred and anger that shall exist among you for many generations. And there shall be no peace among you. That's what's going on right now. Verse 41. And I ask you, is it not better for you to die without anger at the hand of your neighbor and be received by God than it to be slain in anger in a war against him? For in, one's instant, for in one instance, you shall die in righteousness, and in the other, you shall die in your sins. And if you believe that, your, that by your strength you can slay your enemy, before he slay of you, then you are preparing the way whereby the war that you have caused shall be the means of slaying many of your sons and daughters by the hands of the sons and daughters of the enemy that you have slain. If any, if any people be of any adults of the younger generation, you ever watched the Boys in the Hood? It's kind of what Ice Cube said. He said, man, you know. Just go on and on. We get them and they get us, you know. Just keep on going on and on. Gang members know that lifestyle. You know, we just goes on and on. We get them, they get us, and we get them. Verse 41 again. And I ask you, is it not better that you die with anger, without anger, at the hands of your enemy and be received by God than it is to be slain in anger in a war against him? For in one instance, you shall die in righteousness, and the other instance, you shall die in your sins. And if you believe that by your strength you can slay your enemy before he slays you, then you are preparing the way whereby the war that you have caused shall be the means of slaying many of your, of your sons and daughters by the hands of the sons and daughters of the enemy that you have slain. Verse 42. And if you have, if you have hate towards another, you shall not experience the state of happiness with the father that he has promised you after you are dead. He said, this is pointing to man wants to die, but after this is judgment. For you will be in the spirit world with those you have hated. And in that world, you shall not have the flesh that you have at this time. And without this flesh, which, what cause can you give unto your anger for another? And your anger shall cause you to remain in a state of misery 
without the flesh. The meaning you are gonna be in a state of wanting to get them. You can't do nothing about it. You ain't got no flesh. You will be unable to act upon this anger. See, we wouldn't talk. We wouldn't ever talk about this stuff in Christianity or whatever religion you was in. Then even uh, I believe in uh, Islam, different ones. Just from what I heard, I don't know for sure. They, they say once that once you die, that's it. What if it ain't it? See, that's the question. See, that's that's the hundred dollar question. See, see, ain't nothing after this life. That's the way. That's the easy way out. But what if there is something, and you don't live like hell? Now you got to face hell. Ain't no hell, but what if it is? You willing to risk it? You willing to risk it? Verse 43. And you shall see all of your brothers and sisters and realize that we all share the same eternal parents. And you should realize that you have disobeyed the commandments that they have given unto you concerning the way that we should act towards each other. And do you think that you can exist in a state of happiness knowing these things? Verse 44. Verse 4. Therefore, has Yahuwah given unto us these commandments? That we might live together in peace and harmony, one with another. See, while I was reading this, another another scripture popped in my head. I believe that was Ecclesiastes. We said the dead. I believe it's Ecclesiastes. I don't know. You can look it up. You probably know more because I'm. It's not in my vision right now. He said the dead know not anything. Yeah, the 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 uh, flesh body don't know nothing. It's just an avatar. Then on another level, those who the spirit has not revealed the truth of a life out there out there with this word is telling you all the things that's gonna happen, they dead. All that they breathing, they dead because they don't know anything. We were all there at one point. We didn't know the truth of the scriptures. We know the truth of the most high. See the dead don't know anything. Christ even told him one time, go let, let the dead bury the dead. Verse 44, therefore has Yahuwah given unto us these commandments that we might live together in peace and harmony, one with another. See, Yahuwah is in perfect peace. The Father is in perfect peace because he knows all things. Satan, which, which is his son, because he thinks he know, he, know, he know more than the Father, and he refused to accept the ways of the Father. The Father let him go around and do what he wants to do in his free agency, other than what he makes him do. Or, you know, because you know, he knows everything he's going to do anyway is going to turn back and come back to him anyway. Because he knows all things. And Satan can't get out of that loop. Because he can never get around the Father. Knowledge and wisdom. No matter what he thinks and try to do. So every step that Satan takes... The father is already way ahead of him. Verse 44. Therefore has Yahuwah given unto us these commandments that we might live together in peace and harmony, one with another, enjoying the wonderful blessings that the Father has provided for us as his children, in his eternal worlds. See, the Father got many worlds. 
Then it also talks about, so your consideration, a lot of them stores that you see at nighttime, although you be seeing, I don't know how many is up there, those are the portals to other worlds. Or are, 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 are other worlds. For your consideration. Verse 45. And if you do not learn these commandments, and we are not able to abide by them forever, then will we not be able to dwell in his kingdom. For he allowed none who do not obey his commandments to enter therein. Precept, Revelation 21 and 27. And there shall enter, there, there, shall, there shall in no wise enter into anything, into it, in, let me read it again, Revelation 21 and 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile it, neither whatsoever work it an abomination. Or make it a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Verse 46. And he has commanded us, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that you judge not, that you be not judged. For what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. See, because, because we don't know what he knows. We don't know the, the ultimate consequences of our judgments. And because man in his fallen state is more like Satan than he is like God, using the term God. He judges like Satan judges. Going down the same path to eternal judgment of the late. Because he has the mind of Satan instead of the mind of Christ. So man think that they're getting over on you by judging you harshly and all these things. Not knowing the eternal consequences behind it. That's why it says, once again, 46. And he has commanded the saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that you judge not, that you be not judged, that you be not judged. For what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And what me measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Verse 47. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy eye? in the eye of thy brother, but consider not the beam that is in thine own eye. How wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in, th in thine eye? Precepts, Matthew 7 and 3. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thine brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thine own eye? Verse 48, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine eye, then thou shalt see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's eye. How you do that? Go sit down somewhere, relax. Think on the thing through the scriptures to see what the Most High say about it, so you can cast out that evil spirit out of you, so you can see clearly. So you can make a, 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 a if you're going to judge at all, make a, a judgment of equity, because the, the Most High loves equity, equality, righteousness. Verse 49, now this does not mean that Yahuwah does not want us to discern between good and evil and choose good over evil and cling to it, 
but who among us has the right to determine what is good and what is evil? For unto some what is evil might be good unto another, to others. And to others what is evil might be good to some. Therefore, it must be, must, we must judge the actions of others. We must make a righteous judgment. 50. But I say unto you, my dear children, that it is better that you do not judge at all. Believe all judgment to our Father, who has created us all. And that's, that's why it's the vengeance of mine, says the, man says the Most High. Because he's going to judge equity. It's going to be fair judgment. It's not going to be a distorted, demonic judgment of the flesh and has given us our free agency to choose for ourselves that which is good and that which is evil and he loveth all of his children whether the actions be good or whether they be evil he loveth them the same 51 for what think ye that you are better fathers than our father in heaven and if one of your children does evil in your judgment, do you love him less than those of your children that do that which is good? And if you, being evil fathers, desire good for your children, then how much more would, your, would our Father, who is righteous, desire good for all of his children? Precept Matthews, Matthew, uh, let's see where we at, Precept. Matthew 51, uh, 7 and 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things unto them that ask him? Verse 52. And it is a hard thing that you should determine what is good and what is evil on your own accord. For you know not the circumstances in which the actions of another has taken place. And therefore you have no way to judge righteously whether or not this action is good or evil. For in one circumstance the action could be good, but in another the circumstance it could be evil. Verse 3. And if you judge an action of another to be evil, and it is actually good, then the condemnation rested upon your shoulders for the judgment you have rendered. And if you judge an action of another to be good, and it is actually evil, then this condemnation also rested upon your shoulders. Verse 54. For if you judge the actions of another, and you have determined in yourselves that this action is evil, then you shall show prejudice and bias against this action, which prejudice and bias cause you to have anger against this person. 55. And with this anger, you have sealed yourselves up to the prison, or the state of misery in the spirit world of which I have spoken. And if you find out after death that the action that you have judged was not an evil action, but a righteous action, then you will not have the power to reconcile with him whom you have misjudged in the flesh, because you are in the spirit. And a recompense for prejudice and bias and anger cannot be given in the spirit world. And you shall not come out of this prison. Or in other words, you shall remain in this state of misery until the consequences of your judgment has ended in the flesh. Verse 56. And now, my children, I, should, I shall give unto you an example of, what, of that which I have spoken so that you shall not be confused in this thing. For I have seen this among you, even this judgment which you have made in something that is good as being evil. And because of this thing that I have seen in the judgments ye have made, there is much contention among you. And there will be many of you 
who shall suffer because of these things in the spirit prison, as I have explained it unto you. Verse 57. Behold, there are those among you who have condemned others in which they eat and drink. Yea, there are those of you who have cursed your neighbors because they eat the flesh of beasts and cook their food, which the eating of the flesh and cooking, of it, the, and cooking are contrary to the strict laws of health that Yahuwah has given unto us. And you believe that because they eat this flesh and cook their food, that they shall be condemned before God and chastened by him. The precept for this, I said go to uh, Deuteronomy 14, 3 through 21, and Leviticus chapter 11. Those are the dietary laws. Verse 58. And in this, in this thing, you have caused much anger and contentions among yourselves. But in this thing, you have judged your neighbor incorrectly. And you have become angry against them and prejudiced your minds and hearts against them that do these things. And your children see your examples and grow up with this prejudice already in their hearts. And this prejudice turns them away, turns them cold towards, go back to this though. You still shouldn't be eating no pork. Uh, crabs and lobsters and all them, those are uh, sea, sea uh, critters. Those are like the, the equivalent of roaches and spiders and things like that that you eat. When he's talking about cooking, he, he said because a lot of, and it, it was read earlier that I talked about this in another uh, video. The cooking of the food takes away the nourishment and all those things and the meats. But he also said you must cook them because if you're going to eat them, you must cook them because you can't eat the blood with it. But he didn't tell you that you can eat. This scripture right here is not telling you that you can eat pork and all these things he told you not to eat. He don't change like that. Verse 58, in, in this thing you have caused much anger and contention among yourselves, but in this thing you have, you have judged your neighbors incorrectly, and you have become angry against them and prejudiced, you know, because we got a lot of people now that say, man, you shouldn't be eating no meat, man, you should be eating, the only, only thing you should be eating is, you know, uh, fruits, I mean, and vegetables, and I forgot what it's term when you don't eat nothing else but fruits and vegetables. Vegetarian, and it's another one. But like uh, someone else pointed out, with all the uh, sectocides and all the things they're putting on the fruits and vegetables, <laughs> it's about the same equivalent. So the best thing is to pray for it and bless it. But you can't bless eating pork and sea seafood that's like uh, crabs and lobsters and all those things, which are roaches and, and sea roaches and sea spiders and stuff like that. When he told you not to eat it, he ain't going to bless that because his word already said don't eat it. In pork. And your children see your examples and grow up with this prejudice already in their hearts. And this prejudice turns them cold towards those who do the things that your children have been taught are evil. 59. And because of this anger... This prejudice towards them, you have caused those who do these things that perceive to be evil to have anger and prejudice towards you. And they also teach their children this prejudice, which drives us further into families and factions that, have, that anger want, have anger one towards another. This is not only dealing with eating, this, done, this has to do with hating people and this, this be based on your false belief systems and all type of things, you know. And in this anger, you are disobeying the commandments of God and not in that which you eat, see? And not in that which you eat. For the laws of health associated with that which we should eat and that which 
we should abstain from eating pertain it only to this world in our mortal flesh and those who use their free agency to disobey the laws of health receive the recompense for their disobedience in this world and this recompense is the poor health and diminished strength and the disease and pestilence that causes them to suffer during the days of their probation. But once they are dead and have cast off the flesh, that is the end of their punishment, and they will receive no further punishment for that which they have chosen to eat and drink. 61. But those of you that have become angry with them and have hardened your hearts against them because of your prejudice and your biases against the things that you have judged to be evil, will suffer the recompense of your anger not only in this life but in the prison of the next one of the next as i've explained it unto you 62 and when as a spirit you observe that your children and their children even unto many generations see this spirit this this right here has it tells you that because like, a lot of people talks about the ancestors being able to see you. This, this confirms it. But that don't necessarily mean that you're going to follow a lot of the ancestors' ways because the ancestors disobeyed the Mosai. Except for the ones that uh, repented. Or had the opportunity to repent. But it's saying you, they, they are able to see you from generation to generation. And when a spirit, when as a spirit you observe that your children and their children, even unto many generations, do carry on the hate and the prejudice that you have caused because of your misjudgment, then you shall suffer in this state of misery until the end of the cause of this hate. And prejudice that you have taught unto your children. Hmm. So let's consider. A lot of uh, the Ku Klux Klansmen. A lot of the, uh, the racist. They suffer. Even, even the ancestors. The people try to. Uh, say that they're going to simulate their lives at the who disobeyed the Most High and followed other gods. And they're in misery too, even though they're Israelites. Verse 62 again. And when as a spirit you observe that your children and their children, even unto many generations, do carry on the hate and the prejudice that you have caused because of your misjudgment, then you shall suffer in this state of misery until the end of the cause of this hate and prejudice that you have taught unto your children. Therefore, my beloved children, love one another and do good to each other. And I would that you should know that it does not matter to Yahuwah what goeth in the mouth of another according to his free will and choice. But it matters to him how you treat one another. And this is the only thing that mattered unto him. 64. That's why I say love your neighbor. Love as yourself. That's one of the top two commandments. Love the most high with all your mind, body, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And when you've done these things, you feel, you fulfilled the whole law. Because that's what everything in the law pertains to. Serving the Most High, loving the Most High, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Everything in the law pertains to those two subjects. 64. And I would that you should remember the things that I have spoken unto you, regarding the kingdom of God and the different glories that pertain thereto. So there's different glories. 
which are the glories of happiness that all children of God shall inherit according to the individual desires of happiness of each. 65. Remember that I have explained unto you that each of us determined before we were born into mortality which of these glories of happiness best suited our own desires of happiness. And this time of probation was the time that we would prove ourselves that the choice that we have made for ourselves is indeed that which we desire. 66. And since each of our desire of happiness are different, then those things that we believe are good for us might be the things that are evil unto another. And likewise, those things that might be evil for us might bring happiness to another. And for this reason, it would be hard to make a righteous judgment. 67. But the commandments of Yahuwah that I am given unto you at this time must be obeyed by all. For they are truly commandments that will bring us the happiness that we all desire. And if another chooses an action for himself that is not contrary to the commandments of God, even the commandments of his gospel, which are the commandments that I am given unto you at this time, then that person is justified in this action if it bringeth him joy. 68. And if we do not do anything except that we might have... 68 again. And we do not do anything except that we might have joy therein. And the things we do that do not bring us joy, then we may know for surety that they are evil to us. And those things that bring us joy are surely good and righteous to us. But remember again, my beloved children, that what bringeth joy to one per person does not mean that the same joy will be experienced by another. 69. Therefore, I would that you judge not at all, but let our Yahuwah be the judge of us all. And this is what I cause to be taught among you, even in the churches that Yahuwah has suffered to be established among us for our sake even that all of us shall be brought before the judgment bar of God, the judgment bar, judgment seat, and be judged according to the commandments that he has given unto us. Verse 70. And for this reason, I give unto all of you these commandments. And if a commandment is not given by me at this time, then that commandment was not given unto me and your mother Eve by Yahuwah. And therefore, this commandment cannot be a commandment of God, but it is a commandment of men. And if it is a commandment of men, then you will not be held accountable for it at the judgment bar of God. Verse 71. And now I would that you should be aware of the commandments of men. For these commandments of men shall usually lead you away from the commandments of God. See, that's why he's telling you, all the churches of the churches of the devil, because they all leading you away from the commandments of God. They tell you you gotta keep no commandments. You gotta keep the Sabbath. You gotta, and, and matter of fact, they give you the devil's holidays. Instead of the, the most highest holy days. That's why they all system of the devil. And I was reading earlier, I can't read it at all to you, but the the the, uh, the tides and the offerings things that's another system of the devil. Why was the Most High want you to give tithes and offerings to a system of the devil that's telling you the the, the uh, not keep his laws, statutes, and commandments? That's not his requirement. That's that's man's requirements. Verse seven, and for this reason I give unto all of you these commandments and if a commandment is not given by me at this time then the commandment was not given unto me and your mother Eve by Yahuwah and therefore this commandment cannot be a commandment of God but it is a commandment of men and if it is a commandment of men then you will, be, you, will be, you will not be held accountable for it at the judgment bar of God so you're not going to be held accountable if you don't give them no, none of your money quote unquote money Uh, precept. Hold on, let me read verse 71 first. Though. Verse 71. And now I would that you should be aware of these commandments of men. For these commandments of men 
shall usually lead you away from the commandments of God. Therefore, I speak plainly unto you of these commandments that we have received from the mouth of God. Precept of Isaiah 2, 29 and 13. Wherefore, Yahuwah said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. Seventy two. And Yahuwah commanded us saying, Hold on, let me I had another precept seventy one. Matthew 15 and 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandment of men. Verse 72. And Yahuwah commanded the saying, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already in his heart. Behold, I give unto you a commandment that you suffer none of these things to enter into your heart. 73. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever should put his wife away, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever should marry her who is divorced, committed adultery. 74. And now I would that you should, you should know that in the Garden of Eden, Yahuwah commanded me to cleave unto Eve and become one with her. And I was commanded to, to care for her. And stay at her side all the days of my life. And because she was to be engaged in the bringing forth of children, I, I was commanded that I should make sure that she was provided with those things that she desired to make her happy. And to sustain her life in the lives of our children. 75. And ye are our children. And ye also know that I have spent all the days of my life and labor to sustain your lives and give unto you those things that make you happy. But in all these things, I have depended upon Eve as my, my companion. And it is she whom I have been commanded to love and honor. And she has loved me and honored me all the days of my life, which has brought me much joy and has fulfilled my desires of happiness concerning her, verse 76. But even though I was commanded to love and honor her by the Father, I, I did not need to be commanded in this thing, for I truly lo did, do love her, and it is I that am indebted to the Father because of her, 77. And I have cause to be taught among you that it is not the right of a man to ask that a woman be his wife, for it is the responsibility of a man to live his life honorably and cause that a woman should desire him. And if the woman has desired him as her husband, then it is because she believed it that he will fulfill the desires of her happiness. Verse 78. And this is the law of the heavens, which I have caused to be taught unto you in mortality, because of the physical strength that a mortal man has over a woman, for if a man has left to the carnal desires of his heart, then he would force himself upon a woman and cause her to accept him by his brute strength over her. But this thing is most abominable before God, and any man that doeth this thing shall be condemned by God. Verse 79. And again, any man that would do this thing shall not be given the, the internal body of a man in the kingdom of glory that permitted this type of body. And only those spirits that are worthy of this body and desire to, to serve others shall receive this power in the kingdom of God. And those spirits who desire to be a woman to, or desire to be woman in this same glory shall choose for themselves the man that they would have as a husband. And they shall do this according to their knowledge of this man and his righteousness. Verse 8. And I am saddened that there are many of you, my sons, among us, who have corrupted the law of marriage. And I have caused it 
to be taught unto you. For you deceive the woman and pretend to be righteous and pretend that you are willing to fulfill her desire of happiness so that the woman will choose you and desire to make you her husband. And you lust after her in the, in the dowry that is given and not that you should serve her or provide for her happiness. Verse 80. And because it is by the free will and choice of a woman to make a man her husband, she is bound by the covenant that she shall make unto him. And through this covenant, she has obligated herself to this man all the days of her life. And for this reason, a man has no right to put, her, put his wife away. Put away his wife. If it so be that he accepted her desire to make him her husband. 82. And a man shall not be compelled in this world or in the next. In the glory that pertaineth eternal unions. To accept the desire of a woman unless. Oh, let me read that again. To accept the desires of a woman, nevertheless, in the glory of the kingdom of God, where these unions are permitted, there will be only righteous men and righteous, righteous men and a righteous man shall never deny, deny a desirous woman from being his eternal, being being uh, his eternal companion. This was a precept for uh, 82. Let's see. Verse 82, precept, Matthew 22, 27 through 30. And last of all, the women did also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the, the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in the marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Now for your consideration, we see that there's other worlds in the kingdom, other levels of happiness, other levels of existence. So when these brothers who was under the Aaron, the priesthood of Aaron, they were under the, the order of Melchizedek, of this order that's of the highest order they were at a, at a lower order so Christ didn't tell them about what we're learning right now that's for your consideration A two, and a man shall not be compelled in this world or in the next in the glory that pertained eternal unions to accept the desire of a woman Nevertheless, in the glory of the kingdom of God, where these unions are permitted, there will be, see, he said, where they are permitted, they're not permitted in all of the glory. There will be only righteous men, and a righteous man will never deny a desirous woman from being his eternal companion. And they shall only desire this, this union to serve others. For in this, their blessing and their joy are complete. 83. And you shall not engage in any sexual relations of any kind, even those actions that lead up to the desire of these relations, unless you have been chosen by a woman to be her husband. And the woman shall remain pure and untouched by other men until the day that she make it a decision regarding her choice of a husband. Verse 84. For every woman shall one day be the wife of a husband, if she choose so chooses. And if it so be that a woman co committed fornication or anything like unto it, she shall commit adultery against her future husband. And any man that committed fornication or anything like unto it with another woman has committed adultery with the future wife of another man, who the woman has not yet chosen for herself. 85. And if a woman has committed fornication, or anything like unto it, and make it a lie to the man that she is desirous to take unto herself as the husband, and pretended herself as clean and pure before him, then she cannot be put away or divorced from him to whom she had made the lie. But if that man be a righteous man, then he shall 
forgive his wife for the things which he has done before she made the covenant with him. And her sin will be rem remembered no more before Yahuwah. And it will be counted unto the man a, a righteous, as righteous. 86. But if he does not desire to have her as a wife, he shall be justified before Yahuwah in a divorcement. And likewise also shall it be for the woman who has been lied to by a man. And there shall be no other reason that a divorcement shall be given. For this reason, the daughters of God must be cautious and prove those whom they would have as their husbands. Yea, they must assure themselves that the man whom they choose as their husband is worthy before God. And you should test them and see if they live by the commandments of God and not by the commandments of men. See, that's another issue right there with the church, man. And I must say the church because they're supposed to be the the, uh, the office or the place of standard. You can't expect the world, people that don't know nothing about the Most High to, to know this. But the world, the church should. And they rotate men and women in every day. Divorcing, remarrying, and all type of stuff. Sitting down with, with the so-called pastors who, it, you know, encouraging people to, 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 to get married. Knowing they've been divorced. Knowing... And, and got the same husbands and wives sitting still up in the pulpit. And you got people up there preaching who done chose another, the upgraded a wife. You got the other wives sitting out in the, in the, uh, in the audience. Hearts tore up. And they up there preaching away. And I'm saying this by permission, not by command. And, and then you, if you got a, a, a demon been sent to you, who been rotated throughout man or woman, that's why that's why he say he give you permission to divorce him. Because you know you know you, some demons been sent to you. He don't expect you to stay married to no demon. They've been married two or three times. Got 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 two or three husbands and two or three wives sitting up in, in your church. Then then you then another brother come in as innocent. What I mean by innocent is he ain't got nothing to do with that foolishness that's been going on, but he don't know no better. Or she don't know no better. Now all of a sudden, y'all go have a meeting with the pastor and they laughing at you. And this fool don't know what he getting into. Church, the church that made a mockery out of the word of the Most High. That's why he said he's going to come back and destroy it. Why well, shut it down first, right now? That's the church of the devil. Verse 82. And a man shall not be compelled in this world or in the next, in the glory that permitted an eternal union to accept the desire of a woman. Nevertheless, in the glory of the kingdom of God, where these unions are permitted, see, not all of the kingdoms of the glory of God is, is, is only in the highest order. Where these unions are permitted, there will be only righteous men, and a righteous man shall never deny a desirous woman from being his eternal companion. And they shall only be desired this union to serve others for and for this their blessing and their joy are com are complete. 83. And you shall not engage in any sexual relations of any kind. 
even those actions that lead up to the desire of these relations unless you have been chosen by a woman to be her husband and the woman shall remain pure and untouched by other men until the day she make it a decision regarding her choice of a husband. 84. For every woman shall one day be the wife of a husband if she so chooses. And if it so be that a woman committed fornication or anything like unto it, hmm, fornication, I'm just, this, is, this is a dope program, fornication or anything like unto it, fellatio, uh, in, it has been said in, in other organizations that a woman can receive it other places and still say they're a virgin. That's why I said uh, fornication or anything like unto it. Verse 84, for every woman shall one day be the wife of a husband, if she so choose it. And if it so be that a woman committed fornication or anything like, I would, I would just say everybody need to repent. Because nobody been told this stuff. Man. Nobody don't know about this. I think everybody need to repent. Especially if, if you've been in some kind of sexual relationship, you need to repent. Once you heard these words. Ask the Most High to give you a clean slate. But his word is word. He can't go back on his word. But he did give you a way of escape. He said, if, if somebody, if a man or a woman, well, he said, uh, the only way to get, re get, get divorced is if there uh, has been cheating. Adultery, or if a woman, this is a said, if a woman has been married already and been divorced, then you shouldn't marry her. Unless you go back to that, if you choose to go back to to that man or woman who you was married to, that that is if you know. It, This is this is this is a big old mess, man. In the church too. People got all kind of husbands and wives sitting up in the audience, which same church got new husbands. Some husbands up there preaching. Then then kick one wife to the curb. Got a new wife up there. In some cases, two or three wives and got kicked to the curb. They up there, but they still in the same church. Or vice versa. Verse 85. And if a woman has committed fornication or anything like unto it, and make it a lie to the man that she is desirous to take unto herself as a husband, and presented herself as clean and pure before him, then she can be put away or divorced from him to whom she made the lie. That's why also Moses said if you find some, any uncleanness in her give her a letter of divorcement and send her on her way.
verse 85. And if a woman has committed fornication or anything like unto it, and make it a lie to the man that she is desirous to take unto herself as a husband, and present it herself as clean and pure before him, then she can be put away or divorced from him to whom she made the lie. But if that man be a righteous man, then he shall forgive his wife for the things which she has done before she made the covenant with him, and her sins will be remembered no more before Yahuwah. Now let's cover the area of this. What if she's still doing the things while you married? I don't think he's uh, expect you to stay with her. He divorced Israel for continuous doing stuff before. And her sins will be remembered no more before Yahuwah, and it will be counted unto the man as, to, to, as righteous. 86. But if he does not desire to have her as a wife, he shall be justified before Yahuwah in his divorcement. And likewise also shall it be for the woman who has been lied to by a man. 97. And there should be no other reasons that a divorcement shall be given. For this reason, the daughters of God must be cautious and prove those whom they would have as their husbands. Yea, they must assure themselves that the man whom they choose as their husband is worthy before God. And you shall test them and see if they live by the commandments of God and not by the commandments of men. And if they live by the commandments of God, then you shall receive from them the happiness that you desire. But if they live by the commandments of men, then you shall experience misery and strife in a union with them. Verse 88. And there is a short test, my beloved daughters, that will help you, that you shall know whether a man followeth the commandments of God or the commandments of men. For behold, it is the natural desire of all men to engage in fornication, and anything like unto it, whenever they are allowed to do so by a woman. Therefore, if a man attempted fornication with you or anything like unto it, then you shall know that he d disregarded the commandments of God and has followed the instincts of his own carnal desires. And if it so be, and if it so be that you still desire this man, then you shall experience the strife of which I have spoken, and in the eternal worlds your union shall not exist. 89. And it shall be there, and it shall be that there are very few men who are righteous and willing to obey the commandments of God in all things. And you shall realize that if it so be that you depend on the righteousness of men to give you children, then you would be barren and childless all the days of your life. Verse 90. And, it, and if you are a righteous, a righteous woman and are desirous to have children, then you shall be justified in creating these children with an unrighteous man. If it so be that he is chosen by you because you cannot find a righteous man among you. Verse 91. And if your desires are righteous, then shall Yahuwah ease the burden of this strife between you and your unrighteous husband, and shall bring you great joy in your posterity. There's a scripture that says, How, Who knows whether the righteous woman will save the unrighteous man, or the righteous man will save the, save the unrighteous woman? And if you desire, and if your desires are righteous, then shall Yahuwah ease the burden of this strife between you and your unrighteous husband, and shall bring you great joy in your posterity. And if you remain faithful all the days of your life, even that you keep all the commandments of Yahuwah, then shall you be blessed with the choice of a righteous husband in the kingdom of God, if so be your desire. 92. But if your husband is unrighteous, and obeyeth not the commandments of Yahuwah in all things, then are you justified in a divorcement from him. 
But in all these things you shall judge only according to the commandment of God. Commandments of God, and not according to the commandments of men. Beware that you are not deceived by men who put themselves up above you and give you commandments that are not of God. See, that's another thing that a lot of the elders them be talking about now. Elders, I can put his name out there, but you know what I'm talking about. How a lot of these camps rule over these women and ain't even really the commandment of God. See, beware that you are not deceived by men who put themselves up above you and give you commandments that are not of God. 93. Let no man deceive you and say unto you that Yahuwah has commanded him to take another wife unto himself. Uh oh, oh. That's a lot of camps teach that. 93. Let no man deceive you and say unto you that Yahuwah has commanded him to take another wife unto himself. For Yahuwah would never command such a thing. For as it has been explained unto you, it is the choice of a woman to choose a husband. And if a woman cometh unto you and desireth to take your husband also as her own husband, then you shall have the decision to take her unto yourself as a sister wife to your husband. So it's saying if the woman decides to do this, then it's up to you to have a, to make the decision to have her as a sister wife. But it's not up, not, not up to him to go get another wife. But if you do this thing to your sister, then you must know that she shall be equal to you and all of your husband. To you in the eyes of your husband. 94. And there shall be no man that shall be given the power and authority to give a woman to another man. Neither shall the power be given to any to choose a husband for any woman. But unto some who are righteous men of God, Yahuwah suffered it to be given the authority to counsel with the woman who find themselves without husbands because of the wickedness of men. And it will be given unto this righteous man to seal this covenant before God. 95. And if any man taketh a sister wife unto him, to herself for her husband, excuse me, read it again, 95. If any woman taketh a sister wife unto her herself for her husband, that sounds kind of like what um, Abraham and Sarah and then uh, the, their concubine, basically the same situation. And if any man take it as sister wife unto her and to herself for her husband, then it will be counted unto her as righteous before God. But if she does not allow another woman to take her righteous husband as her own, then it shall not be counted unto her as unrighteous before God. So it's, it's up to the woman whether she going to accept another woman into your union. But you still got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. It can't be just like no situation where y'all just going to get it on and just leave, live any kind of way. You still got to be righteous. For Yahuwah delighted in the chastity and honor of women. 96. Behold, I have been loyal and faithful to Eve all the days of my life. In honor, I sustain her and cherish each moment I am blessed with her presence. I have had no lascivious thoughts and no lustful desires have entered into my heart all the days of my life, and I am one with her. And because of these things, we enjoy a fullness of happiness in the union within which we have been blessed. Verse 97, And now I say unto you, if you shall love your spouses as we love, we have loved one another, then you also shall have this joy, which joy causes the happiness that we have shared. And because of this happiness, Yahuwah has established this union of a man and a woman and has given unto us the commandments pertaining 
to this union that shall be maintained in righteousness. And because of righteousness, this union shall exist in the kingdom of the Father forever. So, there we have it. A lot to consider. So, till next time. Shalom.